Okay, as promised, um, you know, the, the official Epsilon Delta definition of the limit. Um, this is pretty tough to uh, deal with. Um, it's not an easy one. Um, so what I've done, and I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and read the whole thing. Uh, the important thing to, to uh, grab, though, is notice that, you know, for every Epsilon greater than zero, there's a Delta greater than zero, such that, you know, the distance between the two you know, it's less than delta, yada yada. You've, you've got this in your math book, but I've kind of custom tailored um, our definition here to fit um, the function x squared, okay? Um, we know all about x squared. I hate to use it because it's so simple, um, but we, we need a really simple example for this. Okay, so we got that, you know, it equals four. And I'm, I'm gonna cross out epsilon, I'm gonna use one. Okay, we're gonna use one for epsilon. So I, I've crossed it out right there. Okay, and just uh, just remember from uh, you know the epsilon delta warm up um, that pretty much you know this is what was going on here. So we got x, you know, which is actually two. I'm gonna write a two right there because that's what it is. It's two. Okay. Um, so there we got that. All right, that's one thing. Um, to take in consideration, here's epsilon, okay? Now I defined epsilon to be worth one, didn't I? Okay, so th this, th this, this limit, I want it to be in between um, three and five, okay? I, I, wanna, I wanna, and to do that, I'm gonna have a pick, pick a certain value down here, all right? And it, it, it's kind of redundant, you know, why are we gonna do that, but uh, we'll see here pretty quick. So, let me go back to my other diagram. Okay, this one right here, and just transfer this information. Okay, because uh, now remember, uh, remember, our what you know what our original function was. Okay, it was the limit. This x goes to two of x squared being equal to. Four. Okay, so let's just go ahead and pull a box around that. Okay, first thing we're going to go is over here, and we're going to just kind of solve this inequality. Okay, you yeah, know, we knew how to do that from the last video. And then we're going to just uh, keep on uh, doing that process, and that's going to give us 3 less than x squared less than 5. Okay. Um, I want to get x by itself, so what I'm going to have to do is take the square root of each one of these things, and that's going to leave me with square root of 3 being less than x being less than square root of 5. Okay, so there I am. Okay, I've got a little interval, and just for your knowledge, this is 1.73, that's about 2.23, and we want to make sure that we're using uh, radicals, nor normally, but for instructional purposes, we're going to use decimals. That way you have a feel for uh, what's going on here. So let's go back to my graph right here. I got 2, and I got 1.73, and I got 2.23, okay? Um, so basically, all I have to do is, is I have to choose uh, uh, what's going to be called a delta, okay, um, interval over here, this distance here, we'll call it delta. And this delta's job is going to ensure that um, this situation up here, being within one unit of four, make sure that is true, while at the same time solving this, or uh, satisfying the inequality, okay? So what I can do is I can, what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna, um, I'm, first I'm gonna measure the distance here, okay? Um, this is gonna be, what, 0.26 delta. If I say that, it's gonna be 0.26. And if I go here, it's gonna be 0.23. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick this one. This is the one that I wanna use. I'm gonna to wanna to use the smaller interval, okay? You always use the smaller one. So let's go ahead and rewrite our little uh, interval there. And that's gotta be less than 0.23, okay? Now remember originally, I had the square root of 3 being less than x being less than 5, okay? And as long as I'm in between that, which is 1.73 and 2.23, 
as long as I'm in between there, I'm good, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick 2.10, okay? Okay, that's certainly within my interval, it's within my delta range and everything, so I'm gonna work with that, okay? Now I'm gonna make sure that it satisfies this inequality. So if I go, I think you can convince yourself pretty quick that one tenth is less than, and it's also greater than zero. Um, so that that's that's what it is, really. I mean, you know, if you're expecting some fancy aha, I'm I'm sorry to say, but there is no fancy aha. These things, this is just a definition, and the, what we did is we kind of custom tailored and made our own definition out of this. Um, and I used one for epsilon, and we used that to find out that delta, or delta was gonna be equal to 0 0.23, and epsilon was equal to one. Okay, here's an important fact right here. Okay, this is what we used. In reality though, when taking a limit, these this epsilon and deltas, these aren't even really comprehensible, okay? Um, Calculus is built on just playing algebra with these very, very small numbers. Just, you know, very minute quantities that are just infinitely small. Okay? And a lot of people go through calculus and they don't even realize that's what they're... I mean, they make good grades. You know, they do everything. But they don't realize that, you know, derivatives, integrals, and everything, you're taking just infinitely thin slices of of objects you're taking infinitely small line segments and adding them up you're 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 you're, you're doing that all the time um, and that that's what we're doing right here so if we take delta okay and and epsilon and, and make them not like in this case if if, if w what epsilon basically is generically is epsilon is a number that is it's not equal to four but it's it's almost zero units away from four, if you get what I'm saying. It's, it's kind of hard to kind of wrap your head around, but basically we can't write these numbers down. I can't give you epsilon pencils. I can't give you epsilon amount of T-bone stakes or anything like that. Okay, so we just we pretty much just play algebra with these these numbers that you know aren't really there. I mean they're there, but they're just so small that you know we can't actually write them down. So that's it for you okay uh, thanks for watching <laughs> and I'll hopefully hopefully you got that if, if, you, if you didn't get it don't worry because it's really complicated and to be honest with you you'll never ever use this again even in calculus so if, if you don't understand this I wouldn't freak out